All right. So to pick up where we left off with character head design, I'm going to open up my Pixlr image. from my folder, I think it's called a PXD. Yep, it will only open in Pixlr, just like a PSD file will only open in Photoshop. And that's what I have, but remember I have layers. We did a lot of um, sketching in order to kind of get to a shape we were comfortable with playing with. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I can move that to Photoshop. In fact, I think I'm just going to move this whole thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it in Pixlr, which is a good sketching tool and a good browser-based tool. But for now, for like real full resolution work, it's better to have a, a desktop version program. Whether it's GIMP, Freeware, uh, Affinity, which is new desktopware, or Photoshop, And I'm just, if I save it as a JPEG or as a TIFF or as a PNG, all of those are formats saved to the desktop that I can open in Photoshop. But I cannot open a PXD format in Photoshop. Just like I can't open a PSD format in Pixlr. And what's the downside? Well, it won't support the layers. All right. If we go, what are we after here? If we go to, to our uh, digital art album in photo, al in photo bucket, this is kind of honor, so I'm gonna call it digital art two. Maybe I'll, I'll rename this digital art honors. There's a way to do that. I'll figure that out eventually. All right, if we go to instructor demonstrations here, and it's fun to look at all past student stuff, this is generally how characters get designed. They start as just very loose sketches, and you kind of refine them as you go. This is a little digital sketch of a concept. It's kind of an Elvis impersonator, monkey, superhero kind of thing. And you might try different poses. Eventually, you might work out a wireframe and the basic shapes, the proportions that are canon to that character. You might try different gestural approaches. Eventually, you make what's called a character sheet, which shows the character from the front and from the side. And then, once you have that, you can put it in any pose, and you can have that character looking recognizable from any angle in any pose, because you've done the, the work to build up the expectations, even though it's from the imagination. And then, you can add other characters around them in a cast sheet. And that's our ultimate goal for this semester, to have a character our own unique characters in a cache sheet with three or more characters. But when you really want to refine a character design, you start with your head design because your head design gives you the vocabulary for the rest of it. And the head is usually the focal point of any panel, any screenshot, any use of a character. If their head is in the shot, that's what the people are looking at to get their cues for the emotion, for the story, whatever it is. So you really want to make sure it's a versatile enough tool and an easy enough tool for you to tell your story through. Once you have that head design, you can bring it and start working it in 3D and even try coloring it. And then you can add that to a, a body model and you can do all the stuff to make it a fully designed character, right? That could be used in video games or 3D animation. But it all starts with that 2D design for multiple angles, right? So that's what we're working on. And you can see that this, if we were to overlay basic shapes on top of it, is kind of based on a wedge and a tilted rectangle, right? Heads are always designed off of two shapes. So let's go back to we've been working on. So I'm going to open up my different brainstorm sketches. I'm going to open it with Photoshop. And I had selected kind of an approach that I liked. It was this, 
but now I'm going to show you kind of what we've learned in, in our basic projects, how I can make better use of it. So I'm going to select it, duplicate it, command J onto its own layer. That allows me to bring it down. This is what I was doing in Pixlr and it was kind of glitching on me. So notice this isn't a three quarter view. You know, it's not fully front and side yet. So I'm going to stretch it bigger. Now I'm going to do some refined sketching based on this. And I might as well give myself a background of white. So make a new layer, fill it with white, put it behind what I'm drawing. And I like to draw with this kind of non-photo blue. I'm a traditionalist. And I'm using a brush that's about 80% hardness, 100% uh, opacity, and only about 23 pixels big. So if I really push hard, I can fill that whole space. But mostly I'm, I'm hitting lightly. Okay, now I'm going to do more targeted sketches with these shape combinations. But maybe I make that bottom shape more mechanical, make it more like a square or a rectangle than a circle. And then maybe I repeat that kind of mechanical straight edge nature of the shapes for the helmet. And then as I find the eye line and the action line down the, I try out different proportions. I like using the blue line because then at any time, I can switch to black and see it more clearly. Often I'll sketch with a slightly lower opacity, about 80% opacity as well. So that's kind of interesting. It's a different one. As I've been thinking about this kind of kindergarten barbarian idea, I was thinking it might be fun to make them like subtle caricatures of political figures. I've always been fond of satire. So what if this little little toddler kind of barbarian guy is a little bit of a satire on Donald Trump? biggest celebrity on the planet right now. And so if I give him kind of a mop of hair, it'll be kind of the orange hair. Or if I make his helmet kind of suggestive of it, maybe it's an orange Viking helmet. It's kind of lumpy and misshapen. Maybe that's an interesting shape. Now if I just switch to a black, I can start to figure out kind of eye designs. Not so much the details, like how many highlights or whatever, but just what shape they take up. If I'm thinking of basing it on Donald Trump, it might make sense to look at some reference, right? This is where digital has a big advantage. I don't have to go into archives. Do a Google image search. And this is great. I might make a collection of, of different expressions that I want my character to be capable of. And that might help with some of the color references too. So this is a nice three-quarter shot. So it shows me kind of what the mouth shape should be. I can play a little bit with the transition between the jaw and the, um, it's called the zygomatic arch, the cheekbones, the size of the ear. But I still want it to be a kid, right? kind of a kindergartner. So I can't make it too bony looking. And then for eyes, well, his eyes are pretty straightforward, kind of an arch and a dot. And you can get all that expression pretty simply. And in terms of his hair shape, and refine it with the black. It's more like this. 
and there's a little dent back here that comes over. So that's one approach. I'll do one more. <clears throat> and then I think I'm ready to try to do a, a front view and a side view, really understanding the shapes. So what if I make that top oval a little wider at the top than at the bottom? Asymmetry is something that really works well for, for character design, even if it, they're believable characters. But maybe the shapes are more like this. <coughs> and then as I'm getting more and more kind of systematic, I'm going to switch colors so I can refer back to this. I want the nose to take up that much space. I want the mouth to take up this area. I want the eyes to take up this space and have one eye width in between. In the next demo I do, I'm going to show you what the realistic proportions of the human head are. Not that your characters need to be realistic, But you need to know what reality is so you can know when you're deviating from it and when you're relying on it, especially when you're playing with caricature or likeness. Just in general, it's a good idea. So that's good. Those are good proportions. I'm liking that. Can I make the helmet work? Let's see. I'll do it with a different color. Simplify it a little bit. To make him look kind of young, let's have the helmet overlap the ear. And then I like these kind of angular horns. So this might be a fun kinder, kinder barbarian <coughs> design. Or the head. I'm not going to get hung up in little details. Anything you design in the head, you're going to have to draw a lot <laughs> as a character designer. So you try not to um, overdo it. I don't have eyebrows yet. I don't think I need them yet. Okay, so I've kind of narrowed in. This is it. This is the one I'm going to progress with. So using the beauty of digital imaging, I'm going to hold down option and say layer, merge visible, and then make a duplicate of just that. Then I can use the eraser at 100% opacity, at 100% hardness, and at a smaller size that's pressure sensitive with my tablet, and I can start cleaning it up a little bit. Not, I don't think it needs too much. Okay, now let's move it. This is my reference. Now I want to figure out what are the basic shapes. So on a new layer, let me turn on white behind everything. If you're using Photoshop but you're not using layers, you're missing out. Gives you a lot of options later. All right, so now this is where I start mapping out the actual design, and I start with a sketch. So as I use my brush, I can steal from the colors I've already used. So my underlying sketch color is that blue. I'm keeping it at around 80%, and I have to find that shape. But now it's not in three-quarter view. I want to find that shape just straight ahead. 